What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I am back to review another episode of Growing Up Hip Hop. This is Season 7, Episode 2, and the episode is titled Sneak Diss. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. Am I going in any particular order? Not really. So, I'm just going to hit on the main points so that we can go ahead and move this along. Starting off with Sam and Egypt, because I want to get them out the way. First things first, you have Sam, he's hanging out with Tyran or whatever, and he's letting Tyran know that basically he feels some type of way that Tretch came at him the way that he did. He's mad that Tretch is questioning what he plans to do because he has a baby coming. That's basically the whole premise of this. He feels like he hasn't done anything to cause um, Tretch any hesitation or any caution. So he doesn't understand why Tretch is coming at him this way. It's like because he's literally seen you mooch off of his daughter for years now. And now that you have a baby coming, who's going to provide? Because neither one of y'all really work for real. Let's, Let's be honest. Take the cameras away. Without this show, what do y'all do to survive? Now, according to Sam, they just bought this house. And according to Peppa on the last episode, she said she didn't put nothing in on it. And I'm like, okay, so I guess they probably stacked up a few of their uh, growing up hip hop checks. But let's be honest here. Did they pay off the house or are they still paying a mortgage? And also, they moved to the middle of nowhere in Vegas. We're not about to act like they bought, like, a $1.2 million house. Hell, they didn't even buy a house that's worth half a million. So, let's not act like that's what's going on either. Also, we've literally seen you come up with all these things that you say that you're going to do, but you don't really do it. For example, you as an artist, you're not making money from that. Him as an MMA fighter, he's not making money from that. So, it's like, if there's a baby coming, how are you going to provide Like, if y'all recall, remember that one season we found out that Peppa bought him a car so that way he could do, like, Uber Eats or something like that? Like, dude, you have been leaning on this family for a long time. And the fact that he said, well, I never came to Tretch asking for anything. Yeah, because you were leaning on Peppa. That's why you didn't have to come to Tretch. Because you knew he probably would have said no. So you leaned super heavy on Peppa. Like, why are we acting like... Oh my God, why is Tretch coming at me like this? Sir, get a clue. You about to have another baby. And the reason why Tretch is concerned is because this baby is with his daughter. Now, let me kind of jump on to Tyran because Tyran now says that he's going to go talk to Tretch. Tyran, don't get in the middle of that foolishness. Please don't. Because at the end of the day, I feel like Sam basically got Tyran to be on his side to see his side of things. And it's like, well, Tyran, yes, your sister is happy. But again, how is this man providing for her? Because he cannot provide her with not a one opportunity. He can't provide her with income. He can't provide her with anything. The only thing he can provide her with is the D and that got her pregnant. So what else is going on? Now this brings me to Egypt. We TV. We TV. When I tell you I never in my life need to hear Egypt wailing like that about how she's a boss. She's a boss. She's a queen. She's a boss. No, thank you, ma'am. Absolutely not. If that's what you're going to go out there and perform, you know what? I would definitely miss Whatever her time slot is, I will go get snacks because I would not want to have to sit through that. So, her dad walks in, right? He just want to check in on her or whatever. And, of course, what is his question? So, what's y'all playing? The only thing that she is trying to focus on right now is the tour and how she doesn't want to do too much because she's pregnant or whatever. So, when he asks her, I'm sorry, she asked him, Oh, so what's like your advice for me? He basically told her to just have barf bags to the side of the stage. I'm like, okay, (laughs) I guess that's the best advice you got for her. Um, The thing is that Tretch wants to know more that's going on in Sam and Egypt's life. But they put on such a fake facade about how everything's going good. Everything's okay. Because if I'm being honest, I feel like Egypt will never be completely honest with her parents because then she has to be honest with herself. 
And then she would have to, you know, really face the facts that everything ain't good over here. But you already know. She gave him the typical answer that she always does. And I'm just like, dude, your daughter's living in a bubble. So until that bubble pops, that's going to be that. All right, now let's just go ahead and talk about the beef between Cree and Brianna. So actually, when the episode started, we did see Brianna go over to Twist's house. And Twist is a changed man. Or sort of, kind of. You know, he's not on the heavy drugs anymore. He still smokes weed. He's found Jesus again. He goes to church. And he lost his girlfriend because he cheated on her. And as far as Brianna goes, um, she looks great. It looks like her life is still okay. She had came over to Twist's house so that they could have lunch. And she brought him lunch. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, okay, I love seeing Twist and Brianna because I really do like their friendship. So, we then see a scene with Cree and Vanessa, right? So, they're in the car. They're on the way to Lazy's little beach party. And Cree, first of all, Vanessa is asking Cree about how her sister's doing in Atlanta. Or maybe she didn't even ask. I think she might have said, how's everything in Atlanta? And then Cree started talking about her sister. I'm like, they don't talk to each other? This is weird. But nonetheless, she goes on and on about how Angela wants to be a singer and all this stuff. And Vanessa lets us know that at one point, her and Angela tried to have a group, but Angela didn't last like more than two months. I'm like, but wait, do y'all even have voices to sing? Like when I think of Vanessa and Angela, I don't hear them being singers. And I feel like maybe they might have sung a little bit for like a pastry ad or something back in the day and it wasn't like the vocals were hitting so what is happening here (laughs) anyways so Cree then gets this bright idea that she's going to link Angela with Brianna because Brianna is a singer and she thinks that it'll be really good for Angela to link with her and be able to see like what type of vocal training and all this that she has to go through to be a real singer but here's my thing why are you trying to be the middleman of Brianna and Angela? They have squashed their beef a while ago. So I'm not understanding why Angela can't come to Brianna herself. One thing that I can say about Cree is that she definitely tries to find her way into situations that have nothing to do with her. I feel like this is no different than when Stevie J's daughter was getting into it with Sequoia. Why are you in it? Like, I don't understand why you have to make it seem like you like Big Bad Cree and you just ready for war or whatever. Because she then goes on to say, like, oh, because, you know, Brianna, this might be kind of hard because she sneak dissed me. So Vanessa's like, what do you mean she sneak dissed you? So she plays the clip and basically Brianna was on her social media and she's like, oh, does Cree actually really even hang out with the Simmons or is this just for the show? I feel like it's a legit question because I don't ever see her being posted on Angela's uh, Instagram. I don't see Vanessa, you know, trying to post Cree, but I'm pretty sure whenever Cree's around them, she posts them because she's thirsty to be friends with the Simmons. So when we actually get to the beach party or whatever, you know, some type of way, I think that Cree has said hello to Brianna, no, no, I think she told her that she looked nice. And then she was like, oh, thanks, but you didn't speak earlier when you came in. And she's like, I actually did speak. And then it just spiraled from there. Cree was going on and on about how, you know, she reads the Bible and Brianna believes in tarot cards and all this stuff. And it's like, girl, what are you doing? Like, you're so mad about her talking about you on social media. And then when Brianna was like, yeah, and I said it to your face, like, I'm not just saying it on social media. I social media. I say things right to your face. So what's up? So Cree is just going on and on. You have everybody kind of looking at her like, what is happening? So Brianna actually walks off, which is shocking. I said, well, look at all this growth. So she walks off. Cree is still talking trash. And I'm just like, why do you keep doing this? The same way she kept talking trash about Sequoia um, when they had that fight last season. So Brianna was like, man, not not in my birthday month or something like that. And 
Cree was basically calling her basic and all this stuff. And I'm just like, girl, what is wrong with you? Now, one thing that I noticed is that nobody who was downstairs when that fight was happening, nobody tried to like, you know, step in and be like, hey, calm down. Nothing like that. They weren't really on Cree's side. So what does Cree do? She makes sure she goes find the other castmates so she can do her woe is me. Let me tell you, I just got into it with Brianna or whatever. And I find it hilarious when TT walked away as well as Sequoia because they don't mess with her like that. And so they go downstairs and check on Brianna like what's going on. And TT's like, you already know what side I'm on. Like, ain't nobody messing with Cree like that. And Sequoia, she's on Brianna's side as well because she did not forget that Cree just pulled that same mess on her last season. So she's on Brianna's side. And she's like, you know what? In her confessional, she was like, I think that Cree is actually jealous of Brianna because she's an actual hustler. She sells her incense. She's an artist. She's a singer. She has all these things that she does. But Cree is supposed to be an event planner with no events. And I said, well, <laughs> that's a bit correct because I have not seen Cree throw an event like a for real for real one in a while like she forced herself to be involved with that little tt um bachelorette type party y'all remember that last season like she forces herself to be in situations that have nothing to do with her and i do not like that about Cree at all so let me just go ahead and get through um this whole sequoia drama okay because Sequoia and her mama, this storyline, my God. First things first, we see Sequoia and her cousin, right? They're in the studio. Um, I don't even care to talk about her singing. Let's get right to the, the drama. So basically, she tells her cousin, like, yo, my mom has been moving funny. Um, We don't even really talk like that. So I've been kind of hearing that she's messing with Lazy, who is also my mentor. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is kind of messy right here. And Sequoia's whole thing is that she wants to get down to the bottom of it because her parents are getting a divorce. However, they are not divorced yet. And since her mom has kind of left the situation, she's been there to pick up the pieces when it comes to Jojo and his health. All right. Boom. So we get this scene with Tretch, his wife, Cicely, and then we also see Tiny come there, right? So at first they're talking about Tretch's uh kid, Egypt, and how she's pregnant and Sam still got this case over hanging over his head. But that is not the meat and the potatoes of this conversation. The whole thing that we really want to talk about is the fact that Tiny is dating Lazy or whatever. Now we get some background info on honestly why she's leaving JoJo. So we learned that she met him in the 90s. They got married in 2008. I'm like, girl, if you met that man in like 95 and then you got married to him in 2008 or something, you was holding him down for a long time, a very long time for him to finally realize that he want to lock it down with you. So I know you've been through some drama. So not only has she probably dealt with infidelity and who knows what else he probably done put her through, but... She says that, you know, the drinking, him being an alcoholic, that right there was too much for her. She had been through it with him for rehab and baby mama drama. But the fact that he won't put that bottle down, no, she can't take that no more. And I absolutely understand that. Um, Now, when it comes to Lazy, we also learn that they're both going to be divorcing their spouses, Right. They're both going to be divorcing their spouses. They've been dating for a year. On the first episode, Lazy just talked about how he had uh, had to go get his four-year-old daughter. So, I'm just trying to do some math here. The man has a four-year-old daughter now. He was dating this woman a year ago. That's when they started dating. So, the child was probably three. I just want to know, is the three-year-old's mother the person that he's divorcing? Or was that just a baby mama that he got and then he's going to be divorcing a whole other woman? I'm just curious to know because I'm like, girl, I don't know if this situation with Lazy is really what you want. Because it might be messier than what it, you know, what it seems to be. So nonetheless, um, like I said, 
Tiny is ready to go from JoJo. Um, we also learn that baby, she is in it to win it when it comes to lazy. Cause she said she want that bone, 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 bone. I was like, oh, this woman is head over heels for this man. Okay. So, um, Tretch, I think he asked like, oh, so like, what does Sequoia think, you know? And she's like, oh, I haven't told her yet or whatever. And Tretch is like, yeah, you need to tell her, especially since y'all been dating for a year. Like, how do you date for a year and you never told your daughter? That's crazy to me. But then it also got me to thinking because Tiny was like, you know, this is kind of put a little bit of a separation between me and my daughter because I'm hiding this from her because I don't want to be judged, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but in the grand scheme of things, you let a man come between you and your daughter, like straight up. You literally let a man come between you and your daughter because you were so busy trying to find love that you decided I'm not going to tell my daughter about my relationship. That sounds crazy, Tiny. Especially consider your daughter, she's a full grown adult. Like y'all are grown people. Like I get it, it's messy because she looks at this man as her mentor and I'm pretty sure Lazy probably knows JoJo. Not that they're like friends or anything, but I'm pretty sure that he knows JoJo from Jodeci. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that it's crazy for you to let a man come between you and your daughter. Especially because when we saw it in last season, y'all... Everywhere Sequoia was, Tiny was. Like, that's crazy to me. That is so crazy. So, then we get this scene of Lazy and Tiny. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they are really into each other. When they were in that beach house, they were, like, laughing with each other. And we can really see how they are in their relationship. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Here comes Eric and Aaliyah. Can we, like... Admit, Eric and Olia are probably the messiest people on this show. They are bone carriers. They keep the mess going and they don't know when to stop. Here's the thing. They walked into the beach house or whatever and they didn't even say nothing. They didn't even say like, hey, y'all, what's up? No, nothing when they walked in. They walked in like creepers because they were trying to catch Tiny and Lazy doing something. So... Um, they walk in or whatever, and they were lazy and tiny were sitting on the couch or whatever, and they were like flirting and doing whatever they do, but it was super awkward once Eric and Aaliyah walked in. So then we happened to see that Aaliyah was going to make it her mission to get the tea because her and Eric go stand outside or whatever, and she's like, what do you think they was doing? You think they were kissing? Like, oh, I'm going to try to find out what's going on. Like, why are you in these grown people's business? Also, one thing that I hate about growing up hip-hop, I'm going to be honest with you, I hate when these old adults be trying to hang out with the young people. Like, I know these people ain't that young at this point. Everybody, like, in their 30s. But I feel like if you somebody mama, why are we having this little party? Like, why is it tiny and lazy having this little beach party or whatever they want to call it with all these young kids that's weird to me I get they're just shooting scenes but I needed more adults there like where's Peppa where is where's some other adults that are of age just throw that out there but nonetheless um like I said Aaliyah is going to make it this her mission so everybody start coming in we see you know TT and Sean and Brianna and everybody starting to come in right now here's the thing when we see Sequoia and she sees her mom, she literally gives her mom a cold shoulder. And in that moment, I was like, you know what? We'll see how this episode goes because I don't know how Sequoia is going to take the news when she really finds out that they are dating, right? So here goes Eric and his wife stirring it up, y'all, stirring it up. Eric is like, oh, so when we got here, you know, it was just tiny and lazy. And then here comes um, Aaliyah. She's like, oh, yeah, it, it made me think that they was on a date night. And I'm just like, really, girl? So as we know, Sequoia does not know officially that they're dating or whatever. So then Aaliyah takes it a little further. And she goes to ask Sequoia, like, but your parents, like, they're married, right? I'm like, you really are 
putting it on thick, Aaliyah. You are so nosy and you are so messy. You're going to ask this woman's child. Number one, you threw it, in, threw it in her face like, yeah, it looked like they was on a date night. Why would you think they was on a date night with all these people supposed to come over? <laughs> then for you to ask her, yeah, because is your mama married to your daddy? Because then it's all messy. You know what I'm saying? But of course, they're going through a divorce, but they're not divorced yet. Okay. So we do see Sequoia. She is clearly overthinking she's stressing out about this and she's trying to process the information that Eric and Aaliyah just gave her because now not only is it that your mom is sneaking around with lazy ball but also your friends or your associates they're peeping game too and your mom ain't said nothing to you about it so Sequoia goes to her mom I mean she goes outside trying to get a breath of fresh air her mom's out there and you know she just wants answers Sequoia really just wants answers but her mom felt like this was not the time or the place. So we need to go ahead and co- table this conversation. So now Sequoia got an attitude. I'm just like, well, here's the thing. I honestly feel like this wasn't exactly the time or place. Like while we're having a cast party, maybe we should film that scene separately. When she finds out about y'all or y'all should have told her before the party. Okay, so that she wouldn't be blindsided with all the stuff that y'all was doing, lazy and tiny. So, what I've noticed, though, especially on this show, this is the second parents do this. The parents, at this point, they are tired of their kids trying to put them out there in front of, number one, a friend group, or on TV, period. Because this is the same thing that happened to Tanise last week. Like, Tanise was trying to put her daddy on front street. He was shutting it down. Sequoia was trying to get some information out of her mama. Her mama was like, not today. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? These parents are tired of y'all trying to put them on front street. We'll have this conversation at a later time. Okay. So like I said, poor Sequoia. She just wanted answers. But girl, I don't know if you really want those answers. Because like TT said in her confessional, sometimes you don't want to know what grown folks are doing behind closed doors. So Here's the thing. Sequoia goes upstairs. She talks to um, a couple of the other castmates and some other people just to kind of get her feelings out there and try to, you know, process everything. She just wants to know what is going on. Honestly, that's all she wants to do. So let me go ahead and push forward to the rest of the party. So we see that there are drinks flowing, okay? At one point, we actually see Tiny and Lazy dancing. Um, and then we also happen to see Sequoia have a conversation with Twist. And he just wanted to check in on her because he can see that there's something wrong. Like, your mama over here dancing, having a grand old time, while you over here with your face turned up. So, you know, he's just checking in on her. And then she happened to ask him about his ex-girlfriend. So he's like, no, nah, not, I'm not with her, even though he brought a girl to the party. So then he tries to low-key flirt with Sequoia, talk, talking about how, like, oh, you know, because you looking good, all this stuff. And she was like, oh, I don't know about that because I'm not what you want, you know, because you always run it for me. And I'm like, wait, is this about to be a love connection between uh, Twist and Sequoia? That's interesting. That is real interesting. And then I was like, well, first, do we know if Twist like black girls? Because every time we see him, it's with a other. So I'm just curious if he likes black girls. So he in his confessional is like, Sequoia just want to bump and grind with me. And she is low-key entertaining him. Because when they were going back up the stairs... He said something, and she was like, oh, you can just call me. And I'm like, so you could, he could just call you for a hookup? Like, what's happening here, Sequoia? What's going on? So let me go ahead and jump over to another quick little short scene that I forgot to talk about earlier. And that was another time that Eric decided to be messy. You have the group of cat, the cast group right here talking. Eric is like, oh, and well, you know, uh, TT, you're going to be an auntie. And I'm just like, first off, she ain't going to be an auntie because that's her cousin. So her cousin is having a baby. 
that's still going to be her cousin. <laughs> so she's like, wait, who's having a baby? He's like, well, Egypt is pregnant. Baby, the way Brianna turned around, I fell out. But TT, she was like, you know, it's amazing. She's trying to keep things on the positive. You're not about to go back and forth and say, I said anything. I said, you know what, TT, you are playing the game right. Because if you would have said anything, Eric Messy self would have took it right back to Sam. And then that would have started the drama all over with your family. She played her cards right. Shout out to TT. So... Let me go ahead back to Lazy and Tiny, though. Baby, like I said, those drinks had already been flowing. They have let loose, okay? All the kids, they out here uh, on the deck or whatever. And we see Tiny and Lazy, they, like, flirting in the kitchen. But, like, flirting like teenagers. Like, I was like, how old are these people? This is crazy. So, they're sitting there flirting or whatever. And Sequoia walks in. Baby, they look like they got caught. They literally looked like they got caught doing something they had no business doing. And Lazy was like, oh, we was just playing. And then he even asked her if they were still cool. But baby, the way Sequoia glared at her mother and then walked off, oh my gosh, I was like, oh, this might be real interesting because I feel like Sequoia is very, very hurt right now. Like, her mom really was playing, playing in her face and behind her back. And Sequoia did not deserve that. Like, ma'am, you could have just been honest with your child. This is messy. My God. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode, though. Like, were y'all team Brianna or team Cree? Sorry, I got a ride for Brianna. What do y'all think about Eric and his messy wife? And what do you think about this whole Sequoia tiny lazy bone drama um go ahead and like comment and subscribe to my channel and i will talk to y'all in the next one bye guys